All right, what's going on, you guys? Brian here, and this is my AEW Dynamite and NXT recap video for last night's episode. Let's get right into it. Of course, there are two pieces of news to talk about first. Well, no, I'm not going to go into full detail, but um, two big stories coming out of tonight or this week. One has to do with the return of CM Punk to a WWE uh, show. Uh, he made an appearance on WWE backstage. Uh, there had been a lot of speculation that he was going to be that he was going to be brought in by Fox for that particular show. And he made an appearance on Tuesday on their on their WWE backstage episode or WWE backstage show. So um, good for him. You know, it is what it is. Uh, the other one has to do with ACH. Um, apparently, he uh, took to social media saying he's quitting WWE because he feels they are a uh, racist, a racist company. Um, all boils down to a shirt that was was made for his. Um, they were calling him Jordan Miles in NXT, and apparently he took offense with their shirt design uh, that they made for him. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that whole situation and going into the, uh, further. But now on to the quick recap of both AEW Dynamite and NXT for last night's episodes. Um, I actually watched the episode of NXT t actually today. I didn't watch it live yesterday. I did watch AEW Dynamite. So Dynamite I'll cover first. Uh, coming off the heels of Full Gear this past Saturday. Um, pretty good show. There were two squash matches. Um, the first one was John Moxley defeating Michael Nakazawa. He then would make a challenge uh, to anyone in the AEW locker room, um, and we'll, we would find out the answer who would answer that challenge a little bit later in the show. Uh, Dark Order defeated Jurassic Express. Uh, we did see the return of Luchasaurus, who would make the save after the match when uh, Dark Order, after they tried to recruit uh, Marco Stunt to their group. Um, Jungle Boy would refuse that offer for Marco. They would then get beat down, and then Luchasaurus would make the save. Um, it was a, tri a triple threat match would turn into a one-on-one -on -one match. It was Darby Allen picking up the victory over Peter Avalon in that match. It also involved Sean Spears. However, Spears would be taken out by Joey Janela. Uh, midway through the match, uh, Darby would then accept John Moxley's challenge, and they will face off next week. So that should be an interesting match to look forward to. Um, Nyla Rose would take on uh, uh, Danny Jordan. Basically, this was another squash matchup as Nyla Rose would pick up the win. Uh, we would hear from Allie. Uh, one of the AW women's uh, uh, wrestlers. She would then be interrupted by Awesome Kong and Brandy Rhodes, who would then, Awesome Kong would then proceed to beat down Allie, then, like they did on Saturday, and I know this is something I m missed in my full gear recap. Um, Awesome Kong and Brandy Rhodes, or Brandy would grab a, uh, while Allie was down, would grab a clump of Allie's hair, and then Awesome Kong would proceed to cut that, to cut it off, and then smell it, and then put it around her, her on her waist. Um, don't know what's going on with that whole, with, with that whole Brandy and Awesome Kong I don't know what that what that all boils down to. Um, we we also heard from the AEW World Champion Chris Jericho, 
We talked about his victory at um, Full Gear over Cody. Um, I am wearing Cody's uh, The American Nightmare Cody t-shirt. Um, he talked about his victory. He would then be interrupted by MJF, who would come out to uh, Cody's theme song. Of course, anyone that watched Full Gear knows that MJF threw in the towel um, to stop the match when uh, Jericho had Cody locked in the Lion Tamer uh, and then would turn on Cody, hitting him with a low blow. And then and that was pretty much it for that segment, but uh, that part of full gear. Uh, they would then go back and forth about Jericho saying that MJF wanted to be in, um, does, he, did, does MJF want to be in the inner circle? MJF would come back and say Jericho wanted MJF in the inner circle. They would then hug. They would then uh, talk more about Cody. Cody would come out, even though he was not medically cleared. He would go after both of them. And we would see the debut of Wardlow. That's Wardlow, W-A-R-D-L-O-W. Um, he would attack Cody. He would then hang Cody with his tie, um, basically throwing him over the top rope and hanging him like that. So that was pretty much it for that segment. We would see Pac picking up the victory over Hangman Page. Um, and then we would see SCU, and particularly Scorpio Sky, retain the AEW World Tag Team Championships over Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho when Scorpio Sky picked up the win, rolling up Jericho and pinning him 1-2-3, handing Jericho his first loss in AEW. So, my thoughts on Dynamite. I thought this week's episode I thought was pretty good. Um, a lot of... Um, we also did see, not before I forget, we also saw a fight break out between Santana and Ortiz and the Young Bucks based on what happened at Full Gear when Ortiz and Santana beat the Young Bucks. They would start out fighting in the back and would end up um, in the arena where they would do the same thing to Matt Jackson that they did to Ricky Morton, putting him, powerbombing him through a stage, through the stage, and then they would try to do the same thing to Nick Jackson, but the uh, private party would come out to make the save, and this would lead to a match being made for next week. Private Party versus Santana and Ortiz, so that should be an interesting tag match to look forward to as well. Uh, one of the funny segments, on, or one of the funniest parts of this fight was when they were backstage fighting, I believe it was Santana that threw Nick Jackson through the door of a bathroom, and who was standing in the bathroom? None other than Orange Cassidy, and the look on Santana's face when he when he saw or, uh, Orange Cassidy standing there, it was like, okay, I'll just shut this door here, and that was it was a pretty funny part of that um, that whole fight. But um, this week's episode of Dynamite I thought was pretty good, a lot of build up as far as uh, feuds are concerned for for future for the future. Um, as far as two huge matches made for next week, uh, they also did announce next week, or then on next week's show, they're going to have a battle royal uh, where it's going to be 12 superstars or 12 wrestlers, and the final two will face off the following week, and the winner of that one will receive a ring, kind of like a battle bowl ring or like a battle royal ring. Um, I don't know what what that was what that is about. So those are those are three huge matches to look forward to. Private Party versus Santana and Ortiz, John Mosley versus Darby Allen, and then that Dynamite Dozen Battle Royale. Um that's set for next week. Now we move on to NXT. Uh the story in this one was uh I believe Rhea Ripley, Tegan Knox Candice LeRae, Jessamyn Duke, 
and Marina Sh Shafir. They were all attacked, mysteriously attacked while playing. Um, don't know what happened with that. There was a lot of people who did check checking on them. Um, we would see the NXT Cruiserweight Championship on the line. Leo Rush successfully defending against Angel Garza in a match that was good, except for the finish. Um, Angel Garza had bumped the bottom rope when Leo hit the final hour frog splash, and that was kind of a screwy finish there to set up a rematch between those two. Uh, Gia Lee defeated Aaliyah in NXT Women's Action. Uh, Aaliyah apparently suffering a broken nose or a damage to her nose because of a kick by Gia Lee. Um, that there was blood coming out of Aaliyah's nose after the match. Uh, we would find out that based on what's been happening the last, the last week and this week, uh, Matt Riddle will is, has been taken out of the War Games match. Um, and he will be facing Finn Balor at NXT TakeOver War Games. Um, we would then also find out that Dynamon, or Dominic Dijakovic, Dijakovic will be replacing Matt Riddle in the war, Men's War Games match as it will be Team Champa versus Team Undisputed Era at NXT TakeOver War Games. And that came about because of Keith Lee versus Roderick Strong, where undisputed, after Keith Lee defeated Strong, Undisputed Era would, would attack, and Ch Champa would be involved, and then Dominic Dij Dijakovic would make the save, and then they would shake hands, uh, him, Champa, and um, Keith Lee. We would see a brawl break out between Pete Dunn, Killian Dane, and Damian Priest, Obviously, that was that's to set up a triple threat match, possibly at uh, Takeover War Games. We would see in a really good match, um, Isaiah Swerve Scott taking on Bronson Reed, in which Isaiah Swerve Scott would pick up the win. Um, we would see a fight between Finn Balor and Matt Riddle during a promo that Bal uh, Finn Balor would do. Um, talking about what he did to Johnny Gargano, how he injured him, and then Matt Riddle, and then what he did to Matt Riddle last week. And that brought Matt Riddle out. That's why, that's what led to the announcement being made of um, Riddle versus Balor at TakeOver War Games. And then in the main event, it was Io Shirai defeating Mia Yim in a ladder match where the winner would get the um, advantage for their team in the first ever women's war games match at TakeOver War Games. Io Shirai taking up the win in that one. With a little bit of help of what seems to be the newest member of Team Baszler at War Games, the NXT UK women's champion, Kaylee Ray, um, who helped Io Shirai pick up the win over Mia Yim. Mia Yim suffered two damaging blows in this match. One that, that bust, uh, busted her, uh, or left a little bit of, um, or opened up a little bit of uh, blood on her face. And then she took a nasty landing through a ladder that was set up outside the ring when, when uh, she was trying to gain the victory. And Kaylee Ray pushed the ladder over and she went splat right through the ladder on the outside of the ring. Afterwards, we would see an appearance by SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey, who attacked Shayna Baszler on the entrance ramp. Um, so that was pretty much it. They did announce Dominic Dijakovic versus Adam Cole for next week in a ladder match where the winner will get the advantage for his, for their team. Um, so both shows, both NXT and AEW Dynamite, I thought were pretty good this week. So this has been my recap of AEW Dynamite and NXT for this week's episodes. As always, I am Brian, and thank you for watching.